Hi guys and welcome to the first of this Cantor solo run series. I'm Browning for as long as I can remember, I've loved retro games whilst growing up and even now favour them over the more newer polished games that you see coming out. With Pokemon in particular I, was, I always made the games harder for myself by doing solo runs and the aim of this series is to bring you a video for all 151 Kanto Pokemon solo runs to see if it is actually possible to beat the game with each one. So let's see the rules. Rule number one, we let the wheel decide. I spin three times on our randomizer wheel and we choose one of the three Pokemon that get drawn to do the run with. Rule two, I can only use that Pokemon for the entire run. I can catch utility Pokemon such as HM Horse for the various obstacles that we um, come across, but they can't be used in battle whatsoever. Rule three, I cannot heal HP or st status effects in battle at all using items. I can recover though using the likes of, well, the move recover. Um, but other than that, no, I can't heal HP whatsoever. Rule four, I can utilize the badge boost glitch as in gen one, it's kind of unavoidable. And lastly, rule five, I can use TMs and HMs. Now they're settled, let's get spinning on our first choice. And here we have the first wheel. Honestly, I reckon it'd be so cool, so, well, not so cool, but so funny if we actually started off, um, like the first spin would be one of the, the original starter Pokemon. Be quite, um, quite a nice start off with one of them, but kind of boring at the same time, but yeah, we'll see what comes up on it. Let's go for the first spin. Yeah, here we go, here we go, what are we going to get? And in the very first choice um, of this randomizer wheel is a Venomoth. Not too indifferent about that. I mean, I think one of the reasons why I didn't use Venom off back in the day was um, because you got it so late on in the game. Like by the time you can get a Venom at, it's pretty much at evolution level. Now let's spin again and see what we get. And second choice is Gloom. Ooh, two um, two poison types um, straight off the back. Well, one bug poison, one grass poison. Um. I don't think I'm going to choose Gloom. Gloom's... For the first video, I think I want something a bit more interesting. Let's go for the third choice anyway. Let's see what happens. And here we go. Here we go. Spin that wheel. Ooh. Ooh, a Blastoise. Venomoth, Gloom and Blastoise. Ooh. What am I kidding? It's going to be Blastoise. <laughs> We've got to go with Blastoise. Okay, now that's been chosen, let's uh, let's get on with the run. And let's get started. So, usually like when I start a game, I always choose my name. For the rival for this game, I'm probably just going to choose my friend Ben. He's, um, he's going to be starting his own YouTube channel soon as well. Mostly, like, he likes playing the likes of FIFA. Um, and when he's got that channel up and running, I'll, I'll whack it in the description so you can see, and you can see his content as well. So we choose our Blastoise, let's get started on the very first battle, and I've got no doubt in my mind that we're going to win this here. I mean, he's got a Bulbasaur, I've got a Blastoise, but strangely, like, his attack is really bad. Like, look how much damage Tackle is doing, I know Tackle's not a very, like, powerful move, but still, it should have been doing more than that with a Blastoise. Either way, first battle was easy and we had straight over to Pewter. Um, when I go over these runs, I'm going to show you the full, um, as much as I can, the full um, gym battles that are in there as well, I do. The um, Brock's gym just is com gets completely decimated. Um, I'm only level 10 at this point as well. I've battled um, a few of the trains in Viridian Forest. And I'm already level 11 going into Brock. I'm not even going to heal, I'm just going to go straight for it. And here we go, here's Brock. And we start off, uh, let's take out the Geodude Water Gun. And I think the Onyx outspeeds here. It does with Tackle, but one Water Gun and that's down. And that's Brock's pretty much sorted. Very quick to get through the first gym. Sometimes on these runs, Brock is actually quite annoying depending on which Pokemon you start off with. Moving into Mount Moon, we pick up the customary rare candy. And go and beat the Rocket and the Nerd so we can get the um, 
one of the fossils, which is just gonna get just gonna go straight in the bag. Probably gonna go straight in the computer. There's no point even keeping it, it's just taking up space. Rocket goes down absolutely no problem. We've got the nerd now. He's got a grimer and a voltorb and a coffin. And I'm quite surprised that level 17 wargun's not taking these out at all. Not even like one shot in them. But we've moved to level 18 and we've been with the coffin. Coffin's got quite high defense, um, so took two hits. Over in Cerulean, we pick up the customary rare candy and then go straight into the rival battle. I kind of I kind of um, wondered about going against Misty first, but I thought the rival battle at level 18 would be a much bigger challenge, so the Pidgeot goes down quite easy. Abra can only use teleport, so it's an easy to hit her. Would have been three hits if I hadn't got the crit. And here's where I mess up a bit. It hits the Hyper Fang and I misclick on Tail Whip. So it takes off a lot of damage, and I'm only on 15 health now for the Bulbasaur. Watergun's not going to do very much, and I'm kind of hoping I get a crit, but the Vine Whip happens. So I have to go straight back in the battle. Let's change up the strategy a bit. Watergun and the Pidgeotto goes down in three hits. It got a bit of damage on me there, but I've moved to level 20 now. Abra is just an easy battle, um, not going to be a problem whatsoever. This time I opt to use Watergun the Rat um, Rattata, goes down to 1 HP and thankfully it doesn't use Hyper Fang to take off a lot of damage. The Bulbasaur uses Vine Whip but thankfully tackles enough to take it down in 3 hits. Move on to Bill and we get the SS ticket. I always thought it was quite weird that Bill's apparently this really super smart guy yet he's uh, made himself into a Pokemon. <laughs> um, yeah, after that we go straight to Cerulean. I miss that first trainer that you see on the um, in the gym floor. He's optional anyway, so we battle the, um, the mandatory trainer. Go straight against Misty, and I don't. I, I never thought this was going to be a hard battle anyway. We picked up Bite at level twenty four, so to be fair, we got a more powerful move than Tackle, so pretty much just biting our way through the entire battle. I only take a bit of damage, and that's Misty done. After that we go straight to the SSN and I pick up my favourite TM in um, Generation 1, TM08 which is Body Slam. And if you don't use this in Gen 1, honestly, I'm quite I'll am quite be quite surprised. 80 base power, 100% accuracy and the chance to paralyse, it's one of the moves I carry out for the rest of the run. Um, I also picked up Bubble Beam from Misty and I also picked up Dig from the Rocket Guy. So. Just for a bit of variation on the types of moves I've got, Bubble's gonna replace Bubble Beam's gonna replace Bubble, so we've got a more powerful water move, and I use Dig to replace um, Water Gun just so we got a bit of variation. And especially, I, I usually put Dig on, especially if I'm against the likes of a Voltorb, Electrode, um, Graveler, and that's and the likes that all use Self Destruct because if you use Dig, it's an easy win for you. So we go into the battle against the rival, level 28 after this point. Pidgeot goes down no problem, Raticate goes down no problem, and thankfully Kadabra doesn't use um, Confusion. Ivysaur is only level 20 at this point, so it goes down in two body slams. Easy, absolutely easy. This is the part of the game where it's it starts to get a little bit easier from now on, depending on which Pokemon you choose. I was a bit sceptical of whether I'd do well against Surge, considering my it's a big weakness, electric against water. The Voltorb takes two hits to go down, which I wasn't too happy about. It does get a Sonic Boom off, so I'm kind of thinking, is Thunderbolt going to one-shot us at this point? Pikachu goes down in one shot, and then we're on the Raichu. I decide to use Dig, but it gets it outspeeds and uses Thunderbolt. So, thankfully, Dig takes it out in one hit, but that was close. Go back to Cerulean, we pick up the bike, because um, I'd rather... Rather go down the bike path than round um, past Vermillion. In Rock Tunnel, I got to a bit of a sticky situation where I thought I was going to have to reset. I got paralysed by a poke, uh, by a trainer earlier on that um, I couldn't get past. But thankfully, Blastoise held on with 9 HP. Managed to get through Rock Tunnel, pick up the uh, customary H uh, Max Aether. I thought about going to um, Lambda Tower and doing the rival first, but nah, I thought... Let's go straight to um, Celadon, let's do the Rocket Corner. As you saw there, when on, on the underground there's a hidden um, elixir um, that you can pick up. Going through the Rocket Corner, go straight against Giovanni. 
And I've got no, no doubt in my mind this is going to be an easy battle. First two Pokemon can go down with Bubble Beam. It's not a challenge whatsoever. They go down in one shot. Kangaskhan, I think... Yeah, it was going to take about two hits to get past it. Um, maybe three, but... Yeah. Body Slam, dig, takes it out. And I'm level 36 by this point. And I'm thinking, what should I do next? Should I do... Um, go to the department store or should I go against Erica? I opt to go for Erica. And I take the quickest route around the... Um, the gym is... As you've seen there, if you go off to the left, uh, miss the one trainer and then use cut, you only have to fight one trainer to get to Erika. Now Erika, some, it depends on the Pokemon, but sometimes she can be easy, sometimes she can be hard. You don't have to fight her at this point, I just chose to. Victory Bell gets off a critical hit on Razor Leaf and I'm honestly thinking, when it gets to that Vileplume, I'm not going to survive here. Tangler is never a problem, it's got Bind and Constrict, it always goes down. Come to Vile Plume, use, use Dig to see if I can get a critical, but I only do about half damage. And Petal Dance knocks me out, so we go straight back into the fight. I picked up Ice Beam this time to see if that makes a difference, but unfortunately, I get put to sleep. And and the Victory Bell uses Vi Razor Leaf twice. Third time lucky on Erica, let's see how we do. I opt to go for Body Slam, and as you can see there, reason why I love the move, the Chance of Paralysis. It makes it so much easier, especially your Pokemon is slower than a lot of them. And strangely, Blastoise is quite a slow Pokemon. The Vileplume does get a Petal Dance off, but I've retained so much HP, I win the battle with two Body Slams. We go straight off to Lavender Tower to go against the rival, and look at his levels. I'm level 38 at this point. Most of his Pokemon are gonna go down in one hit. The only one that I really have a problem with is the Gyarados, but still goes down in two hits. But later on in the run, I know that Gyarados is gonna be a real problem to take down. It's got it can tank a canny few hits, so yeah. The Ivysaur, again, not a problem. Body slam goes down in one. Once we've saved Mr. Fuji, we can go get the poker flute. Um have to go and do this before we go to Fuchsia because you can't get past the Snorlax, so after this the game kinda opens up. You could go to um do Silvco, you could do um you could yeah, you could go Surf Core, get Sur um, Lapras, you can go to uh, Fuchsia and get Surf. I hope to go to Fuchsia and do um, Koga first. I have more of a problem against um, the trainers in his gym than I usually do against Koga. It's the Hypno and the Drowsy that always throws her off. The Jugglers, um, thankfully, don't do too much damage to us. And we move on. We have... I uh, Actually, this one here is an optional trainer and I... Because I'm playing on double speed, I actually um, pressed a bit too much and I ended up fighting against him. Not a problem though, he only does a little bit of damage with the Arbok. And we go off to fight the last man that you train him for, Koga. This juggler has got Drowsy and it goes down in two hits. This is why I love Body Slam, it just... It does so much damage and it paralyzes, it makes it so easy. I'm so confused why Ice Beam's doing so little damage, but... I think it's a special move in uh, Gen 1 uh, off the top of my head, so yeah, Hypno has quite high specials, so if you're not familiar, in Gen 1, special attack and special defense are both the same thing. That gets changed in Gen 2, but against Koga, I'm, I've got him with quite um, a few hits done on me, I'm poisoned, I'm only halfway through and I've got 71 HP left, I get par I paralyzed the coffin goes down in three hits and I'm on 45 health for the wheezing. Now this is where it actually gets quite funny. I thought if I get a nice bloom off I could freeze it but it uses self-destruct. Reason why it's saying I've won, I actually had the other Pokemon on my HM Halls in my um, party. So I technically won the fight. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys, let me know in the comments. We pick up Surf and go straight over to Silvco. Now there's a certain order that I like to do Silvco in. Usually you go to floor 5, pick up the elixir here, go and get the key card from down here. You have to fight this um, rocket, it's a mandatory trainer if you want that ca car ca the card key. But it's not a problem whatsoever, the most annoying thing there is that he paralyzes me. So we go pick up the card key and we start heading back. And I accidentally run into this um, optional trainer here, the scientist. And it gets a little dicey this battle. Magneton is super has super effective moves and it keeps using Sonic Boom and it outspeeds. 
Um, so I, every move, every turn, I am losing HP. It's got two Pokemon left, and I was praying that it didn't use um, self destruct on me. It doesn't. And we move on to the last Pokemon, which is Magnemite. I get f fully paralyzed on two consecutive turns. Thankfully, with five HP, I, I beat it with a Body Slam. After healing, we go back up and we go straight to floor ten, because on floor ten, if you go to the left, there's one there's one optional trainer here, but in this room you get a car boss, you get earthquake and you get a rare candy. So this room's worth going to, um, especially the fact that earthquake is a 100, 100 base power move with 100% accuracy. It's the best ground type move in the game, like by far. So I thought, you know what, let's get rid of, um, let's get rid of dig, but I didn't have dig so I had to get rid of withdraw. <laughs> Forgot that I, I got rid of that earlier and we go straight for the rival. And this rivals, it kind of depends what level you are, what Pokemon it is, as to whether it's hard or not. It opens with Quick Attack, I open with Ice Beam, it doesn't one hit KO. Body Slam takes it down, and here's where here's where I start um, realizing Gyarados is going to start being a problem. It takes three Body Slams to take it down. Growlithe, not going to be a problem whatsoever, one Surf takes it out. Now we've got Alakazam here. One body slam doesn't take it out, but thankfully it paralyzes and is paralyzed. And we've got 109 health to go against Venusaur. I opt for Earthquake, does half health. And there Oh, and it hangs on with one HP. Body slam takes it out, and there's the rival done on the first try. I didn't even go and um, heal at this point. I just went straight for Giovanni. I thought he's got a Nidorino. I've got some I've got a very good coverage of moves to go against him. Earthquake takes down the Nidorino. Kangaskhan, Earthquake, it's probably going to take two or three hits. It goes down in two, which is good. And the Rhyhorn's going to go down in one hit with Surf. And with Needle Queen, I was opting between Surf and Earthquake, but Surf takes it out in one. And straight off to Sabrina. Sabrina, the, I never have a problem with her, um, even though she's actually classed as one of the harder like, gym battles in Gen 1. But her defense, uh, the defense on her Pokemon is awful, so most Pokemon go down in one or two hits. I've got Ice Beam for the Venomoth, it goes down in two hits, but I get paralyzed, which isn't good. Alakazam is her biggest threat. I need to try and take it down in one hit. That boy, it throws up Reflex, so it's going to be a free hit. Even though I get the critical hit, it goes down in two. And that's Sabrina done. I go to um, Burnt Mansion, get the secret key, and we go straight off to Blaine. Blaine, I would say, probably one of the easiest um, gym leaders in Gen 1. He's, it's got a weird thing as well, like, if, um, even if he, even if he has full health on some of his Pokemon, he still uses a Super Potion. It's a weird glitch that I've never figured out. Um, but either way, a couple of Surfs, all his Pokemon go down, and we're straight off to Giovanni. And, considering how easy he's been in the rest of this run with Blastoise, I've got no doubt in my mind this is going to be easy. I didn't even heal after the trainers in this in this gym. The biggest worry was um, the amount of damage that Doug Trio did there. It put me on 95 health, even though because it outspeeded. Surf takes out Needle Queen. We get level 50. Surf takes out Needle King. There we go, and we're at Ride on. Surf takes it out. Easy battle. Next is the second from last rival, and the Gyarados is still scaring me a bit here. Um, and I'm not too sure that this level I'm actually going to beat it, even at level 50. The Ice Beam the Pidgeot still doesn't one hit it at this stage. The Rhyhorn is going to go down in one hit with Surf, easy battle. And next we've got the Gyarados, this is probably where I'm worrying the most. If he uses Dragon Rage, which he does, that's a lot of damage he takes off. I can usually tank a few hits, but Dragon Rage does a set 40 damage every single time. So if you're, you've got low HP, that's not a good thing. Zalakazam throws Reflect and starts recovering. Psybeam does massive damage with the critical and I lost that time. So we'll, fight, we'll go straight against him again. And I opted this time to use a couple of rare candies just to give myself a little bit more of an edge. And Ice Beam still doesn't one shot the pitch shot. <laughs> Which is so weird. I've done this run... I've, I've done this so many times in the past, these types of runs, and Ice Beam usually just one hits that Pidgeot. This time I get lucky, the Gyarados doesn't use Dragon Rage, 
Um, Alakazam, this was the big problem last time. So I opt for Earthquake. Does over half damage, nearly takes it out. I've got 48 health left for this Venusaur. This is not looking good for me. Opt for Ice Beam, see if I can get... Ooh, 1 HP left and I'm on 2. I outspeed and win. Ah. Oh. I thought if I used Ice Beam, I might be able to um, freeze it, hopefully, but that's not a very high chance. Now we're at the Elite Four. Deposit all the Pokemon we're not going to be using, so bye-bye Bellsprout, bye-bye Lapras, and bye-bye Pidgey. We don't need you anymore. Usually before the Elite Four, I always decide, you know what, I'm only going to fight five times. I can only um, heal outside of battle, so let's get five, re five full restores and just see how we do. Say so beforehand, I'm at 4 hours and 43 in game minutes. And let's see how we do against Lorelei. Out of the f out of the five um, trainers in the Elite Four, Lorelei's probably the one I'm I don't think I will do the greatest against. Considering she's got ice Pokemon, I thought Earthquake would actually do quite a lot of damage. It doesn't. Um so I just opt for body slam, considering it can paralyze. But she keeps using um either rest or hyper portions or Whatever portion she has in her arsenal. And one of the more annoying things about some of the Pokemon. They use Supersonic a lot. With the AI with some of these. They try and use moves that. Will always super effective against. Like, are always super effective against you. If they're not. They'll use like the next one that they can. And because um, water moves are not f very effective against Blastoise. It keeps using Spike Cannon. keeps using... Um, Supersonic and Supersonic doesn't have great accuracy, but for some reason it seems to hit me every flipping time this on this on this battle. Slowbro is not getting much damage done by her earthquake, so even though it gets down to half health, I'm now at half health and I try opting for Surf and strangely Surf does more damage. But I guess that's because I'm a water Pokemon, the stab move then does extra damage. Go for Surf on the Jinx, takes it out in two hits. Now I've got 63 against the Lapras. Um, I hope for Surf again to see how much it does. And then I get confused again. We go for Surf again. Which is down to half health. It's going to be a 4 hit KO possibly. Maybe a 5. I'm not confused anymore. And hopefully if I can get one more I've won. And she uses a super portion. Great. And then I get... <laughs> oh, Lorelei is so annoying. It's... She's probably the most annoying Elite 4 member in my eyes. So let's, um, went straight back into another battle with her just to see how we did. Level 55 at this point. Dugong goes down in 3 hits thanks to a critical. I'm getting huge damage done to me by the spike cannon on um, Cloyster. So we try, um, oh, get confused again. Am I going to lose this Cloyster here? Uh, oh, it critical hits with the spike cannon as well. In Gen 1, if you get a critical hit with a multi attack move like that, Every every attack on that multi hit then is a critical hit, which is annoying. Um, but if you're using the badge boost glitch, you wouldn't actually want it to be a crit. Even the Jinx gets a um, critical hit with um, double slap. What is my luck with this one? So we've got 20 health to go against Lapras. It confuses me. I'm not going to win this round. Although we do paralyze it, but it uses body slam. Okay, third time lucky. Let's see how we do. Still level 55. I didn't want to be higher than this level to go against her. I was pretty damn sure I could beat her. Three body slams takes out the dugong. And then gets she gets a spike cannon critical hit again. Oh, and I paralyze with my body slam, but it's still Cloyster has got massive defense and like, just in general, it's such a bulky Pokemon. Slowbro, because it's only got water moves, it doesn't have a psychic move, it will only ever use it amnesia um, or withdraw, as you can see there. But it just goes down after a few hits. Use Surf on the Jinx, it takes down half health, and Jinx use Frash. Oh, I'm down to 37 health, I don't think I'm going to do this again. We body slam, and we get confused. Although it confuses doesn't work, we get two consecutive body slams. Let's use this. Super portion. We've ran out of PP for Body Slam, and oh, we get confused again. It's up to this one. Yes, and we've done it. Third time lucky. We beat Lorelei. That was higher than it should be. Now Bruno, 
He is by far the easiest Elite Four member that you can go against. Onyx goes down with one surf. Hitmonchan. Down in one surf. Hitmonlee. Down in one surf. Onyx. Down in one surf. And Machamp. Ah, oh, half elf. <laughs> Thought I could one shot his entire team there. So there, Bruno, first time, very easy. Now I didn't even save against him because I didn't take any damage, so I mean I didn't heal afterwards. So we're going straight against Agatha. Agatha is kind of um It depends what your setup is when you go against her, of like how easy she is. If you've got a ground move and ice move, you can kind of take her out quite easy. As you can see here. Surf only does half damage against the level 55 Haunter. I'm down to 119 health. Arbok doesn't even get taken out in one hit on, on Earthquake. Then at the final Gengar, and she uses Dream Eater. I use Earthquake, takes it out in one hit. Whew, I beat Aga for first time. Flipping heck. So we're straight on to Lance. And let's heal here and use an Elixir, start some PP. Let's see how we do against Lance. I might have to do this one once or twice and maybe use a rare candy or two, but we'll see how we do. Body slam, we get the paralysis. And it uses hyper beam. Oh. On the hyper portion, wow. Oh, consecutive hyper beam. This, this battle's over. I'm not going to win this one. Oh, well, let's just keep going. Ice beam, let's take out the Dragonair. And Ice beam doesn't take out the second Dragonair. Must have just been... Oh, no. I gets frozen. There's the freeze we've been looking for. Aerodactyl. Oh, wow. We still hang on with 14 hit points. Can we take out? Yes, we can. We took out the Dragonite. Wow. First time against Lance as well. This is a very good um, very good run against the Elite Four here. It's only Lorelite's giving me a problem. Have I got enough to... I don't think level 59 I can beat the rival. Let's use the let's use the rare candies up, why not? Might as well. Let's just see how we do. And here we go, the final battle. So the first point we're just gonna come out with is the Pidgeot, so hopefully Ice Beam maybe at this point might take it out in one. It still doesn't. What is with Blastoise and Ice Beam? So the Yalakazam was a problem last time. Whoa, one hit KO with a body slam critical. Surf takes out the Rhydon. We're looking very good right now. Let's hope it doesn't use um, Hyper Beam. It's paralyzed. Get in, there's the Gyarados down. Arcanine's gonna go down with one Surf. Now we're against the Venusaur, it's the final Pokemon. Which should we choose? Let's go for Ice Beam. It uses Mega Drain and Ice Beam. There we go, we've done it. We've beaten the champion. Wow. So it took to level I can't remember what level was. Maybe was I level 65 by the end of that? Yeah, I think I was. Um, yeah, there's the first run done. And let's see what time we ended up on. Level 65. Five hours and seven minutes it's taken us to beat the game with Blastoise and in game in game time. That was interesting. I didn't think Blastoise would be able to do that as quickly, but yeah, that was yeah. That, that's a good. That was good um, first choice, really. Thanks to the randomizer wheel. Anyway, thanks for um, watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. You know all that YouTube stuff. And um, we'll we'll catch you um, next time. See what the wheel decides for us. Catch you later.